bet I walk 15 miles a day. I do walk 15 miles a day. See, I'm in charge of courtesy here. Courtesy. Now, isn't that a day word for a place like this? But the meaning's all right. You see, I'm the person who introduces our company to all our visitors. These visitors come from all walks of life. VIPs, Boy Scouts, businessmen, mechanics, all sorts of people. And our main job here, our only job, is building people's individual wishes on wheels. It's always kind of fun to guess from the name and the place just whose wishes you're looking at. Says Indianapolis. Maybe a family car. And Mother probably said... When it comes to color... Bright red! Blue, I think. With the ivory top. Blue. With the ivory top. But it's got to have power steering. With power steering. And the big radio and heater. And white sidewall tires. And the V8 engine. Yes, and the V8 engine. If you let your imagination run a little, you will really have lots of fun with these wishes. Here's one for the wide open space. I don't care how long it is, long as it's long. However, color is the choice that's easiest to see. Red. Is there some other color? I want a little old green one. Black. <laughs> well, maybe it's not quite like that. But we don't just make a car for anybody. We make cars for somebody. From the time a car is only a frame, it has some... And it takes thousands of smart people and somebody wishes it and ordered it. Let me show you where it starts. It's a spot right in the center of the factory called production control. All the details of every order go out in code from this master tele-autograph to 38 other tele-autographs on the floor of the plant. We'll pick out one order, say, number 642 for today. Now let's go find the car. Over in another plant, we're already building the body for 642, but we start at the head of the assembly line. Notice the tele-autograph? Yes, same order. And that's her frame. Yes, sir, eight million pounds of stuff. You know, materials, parts, eight million pounds come pouring in here every day, and they go out ready to drive. Between here and the end of the line, better than 13,000 separate things get assembled to make a car. You know, it takes 27 miles of conveyors to feed the stuff to this assembly line just right. Yes, sir, I'm loaded with statistics. So many parts, lines, people, machinery, an automobile factory is mighty confusing to a stranger. I'll try to make it easy to understand. So come along. You know, the assembly line is like a big river. What keeps it flowing are all the smaller streams that feed into it along the way. Some parts we buy. Some of them we make ourselves. Isn't that pretty? It's a coil spring. We build them right from the raw stock. It's a big job all by itself. They start off like rods, real long and straight. Those things are going to be springs. Now, you watch. First, we grind the tips to make them square. Then we heat the tips so we can flatten them out. When the spring's all finished, take a good look at it, and you'll see why the end's got to be flattened. Next, we put them in a bar furnace, full length. Remember, this stuff is some of the best steel money can buy, and we've got to give it a permanent wave. Boy, listen. All right, now it's red hot and ready for the big twist. Now, watch this.
just like that. Of course, there's more to it. For example, you think they're hot enough now? Okay, we heat treat them. That's the equalizing furnace. Just so long at just the right temperature. That's important, gives them strength. Now we quench them in oil. That's so they'll hold their shape and temper. After all this, a coil spring should be exactly right. But we squeeze every one of them and measure it straight right to a whisker before we okay it and start it off of the assembly line. Now you see we're back where the springs join up with the main stream. And by the way, we don't stick just any spring on any car. There are a lot of different types of bodies, some way more than others. We make different springs for each one. The leaf springs come in on another feeder. And it's the very same thing here. That white ticket's the order. There are different kinds of leaf springs for different bodies. These springs match up with order 642. Now here's an important part. It's the rear axle. And it's not just a part. It's a lot of parts. It's a complicated sub-assembly, and it's one of the things that delivers engine power to the rear wheels. Skillful people and marvelous tools. And all tools don't have to be big to be marvelous. Take this. There's a nut on the brake fluid line that's hard to reach, and this young lady tightens it with a clever little rasp-like tool. Tricky, huh? One of these main assembly lines is a single line, it's true. But it has different names at different places, like having different addresses on a road that's a mile long. Until the wheels go on, it's called the frame line. Then it's the chassis line until the body of the car meets it. And after that, it's the final assembly line. Here's another one of those feeder streams coming in. You got to go clear across the plan to the thing we call the merry-go-round to chase this one back. No brass rings on this merry-go-round. Rubber rings. Used to be another rubber ring. Hasn't been so long ago these things had inner tubes. Now they're tubeless. about that? Now here's another feeder stream coming in. Number 642 has a blue steering column. The main thing is what's inside the steering column. Manual steering or power steering, we call it coaxial steering. It's in and adjusted, and the line keeps right on moving. Yes, she's on her own now, riding on her own four wheels. But there's the baby that gives her the life, the V8 engine. When you trace the engine line back to its start, you find some pretty rugged chunks of metal. This is the engine division. And here we start with rough castings, cylinder blocks. A lot is going to happen to those blocks before they get under the hoods of cars, a whole lot. To begin with, things like this. Milled off clean as a whistle. And with great precision, too. That block is tough cast iron. Mind you, when it's finally an engine, the fuel mixture is going to explode inside it thousands of times every mile. It has to be tough. And to cut tough metal, you have to use something even tougher. Like this tunnel brooch. It's 90 feet long. Those teeth are made to cut a lot of metal at once. They cut the block down close to its final dimensions.
If you know something about machine shops, you won't find this operation boring. This is drilling. Drilling lots of holes at once with multiple spindle drills. The block needs lots of holes for water and oil and for setting studs. If the holes are for studs or bolts, they have to be threaded too. It's a pretty sight to watch. All the holes we drill must be made to ultra close tolerance, particularly the biggest holes of all, the cylinder bores. We finish the cylinders on these giant honing machines. They give the last little bit of perfection to the dimensions and the surface of the cylinder walls. But the final honing is really just the beginning for these engine blocks. What you saw start out as a rough casting is going to wind up with the power of a herd of horses. Now watch it grow. There goes the clutch housing. That's one part. Depending on what you count as a part, there are about 700 more to go on before this becomes an engine. Watch almost anyone here and you'll find his job looks easy. But try it. There's skill up and down every line, and the skill is backed up with machine muscles. Now here's a boring job, and we can do it six at a time. It makes the pilot hole in the clutch housing accurate in size and alignment. Remember now, we're still on the engine line, the feeder line that delivers engines to the main assembly line. But even the feeders have tributaries of their own. One of them is the crankshaft line. It starts with a billet of white hot steel, and you don't need words to describe what happens. There they are, crudely finished, but very, very rugged. In every important way, they're accurate, but there's still a lot to be done to them. A lot of machining, polishing, and delicate balancing. Because you see, a crankshaft has to be both tough and delicate. In its lifetime, billions of explosions inside the cylinders will pound against it, and it'll have to turn each explosion into a twist on the drive shaft. But at the same time, we have to balance it so delicately, it'll spin like a top at high speed. And now on the engine line again, we lock the finished crankshaft into the place where she'll do her spinning. Bearings front and back and three places in between. Here come the muscles. Uh-huh. The pistons are the muscles that do the pushing. They're carefully calibrated and matched by numbers to the very cylinder bores where they'll be installed and a specific set is sent off to meet a specific engine. And into the engine they go. Another housing. And then comes the oil pan. The tallest part of it is the deep reservoir where the oil intake floats. You see, we're still assembling her upside down. But that's all we have to do from the bottom. So over she goes. This mechanical alley-oop is a very handy thing. Makes an engine as light as a feather. From this point forward, the engine grows quickly because it's now an assembly job. The machining's done and finished parts are ready to be attached. These are head gaskets. They make the heat-proof, explosion-proof seals between the cylinder heads and the block. And this is one of the cylinder heads where the overhead valves and spark plugs do their work. And here are the rocker arms. They make the valves go up and down. Every part in order and on time. This is the intake manifold. There's something exhilarating about the last bit of the assembly job on a car or an engine, after it gets to looking like what it's finally going to be. This is an automatic transmission. When she's done, this one's going to be able to shift for herself.
That's it. One engine headed for its final examination. Here's where we find out how well we've made them. This is the dynamometer room. Engines lined up waiting for the big test. We give them a good run in, and the dials of the dynamometer say yes or no. Don't look for these gadgets under the hood of an automobile. They're just temporary covers to protect the open parts while baby gets her beauty treatment. That familiar protective coat of aluminum paint. This is the end of the line. Engine meets chassis. That's the drive shaft. It goes on just before the engine lands. This lady right here is the pilot who eases the engine down. The speed of the engine line is matched to the speed of the chassis line, so they'll come together just right. And remember, certain engines are meeting certain chassis. You've got to feel the timing of this in your bones. And you've got to stay on the ball. If you do, it's easy. Easy as pie when you know how and you got the tools. And there's a thing that takes plenty of know-how and some real big tools. Have you ever seen a body plant? I guess big tools is a big understatement. Why, they've got presses, 50-ton, even some 1,800-ton presses that slam out parts of the body, you know, tops, bottoms, sides, doors, in one whack. they can take two pieces of the floor pan and put them in this gang welder, and before you know it, they're put together with a metal seam. All happens at once. All this is the way a body gets started. The body line is the biggest and the longest of all the feeders that bring parts to final assembly line. And there's some marvelous tools here. You take the conveyors that bring the panels to the place where they're assembled and the big welding fixture that you put the floor pan and the sides into. It holds them just exactly right so the welders can get inside and out and stitch them together. And after we've spot welded the sides to the floor, we put the top on. And notice the way we lift that top. And you gotta realize that this isn't an any old side, any old top business. Every single thing is scheduled to arrive on time. Particular top for such and such a body according to the orders. Well, that's your car number 642 getting welded up right there. piece of the body we until before we paint is the trunk lid. Around here we call it the rear deck. Uh, we mount it and we set the hinges and the latch. And about the same time, uh, we adjust the hanging of the doors. And you know something? Hanging doors is one of the trickiest jobs on this line. This is about the last you'll see of white metal because here comes paint. Order a car blue, red, green, or yellow, or what have you, it's going to be this color underneath. The metal is bonderized, and that rust proofs it. Then comes the prime coat. The underside gets it too. It's kind of pretty, but the color is still the same. Here they go, off to the paint lines for the final color coats, the colors that have been ordered. On these two-tone jobs, we do the tops first. This is your number 642, and she's getting an ivory top. Next, she'll go to the oven, and we'll bake that ivory dry before we give her the blue below. And you know, the paint is scheduled all along the line, just like parts of the chassis or the engine. Certain body, certain paint. What the orders say, that's what we spray. Blue! And 
they come out of the oven looking pretty as Easter eggs, and they get even prettier now and in a hurry, too. Because from here on, we attach the things that make them look like cars. Wraparound windshields, chrome moldings, things like that. But believe you me, nothing in the whole factory is any prettier these days than the spot where paint and upholstery get together. And pretty soon, they're all dressed up and ready to be trucked away to the second part of the body line, the one where the body goes off to meet the chassis. Again, it's the Tell autograph that starts the right body out for the right chassis. Hi. We run two lines over here, you see. Odd numbers on one, even on two. The main thing is to keep them rolling right along. Now, let's try to find the body for car number 642. It may be way up the line by now, on its way to the body drop. Oops. You'll notice all along that it's the Tell Autograph that gets everything together right, keeps the right numbers on the right cars. Body hardware makes the body grow fast. Those are the brackets that'll hold the hood. And this man's installing the control for the handbrake. Here's the mount for the heater. It goes on the face of the firewall. And some of the chrome still goes on here, too. Now, here's something that looks simpler than it is. This is the instrument panel for 642. Color and equipment are just as they were ordered and it arrives on the conveyor line at just the right time to meet the body and be installed. Just the way the body will soon meet the chassis down at the final assembly line. To me, it's like the body as a date. Yes, sir. And the tele-autograph machine makes sure the body gets dressed right for that date. And we make sure it gets there on time. Why, it'd be awful after all this if the chassis were stood up, and we never let that happen. You'd be surprised how many different things are still to be done when the body's this far along. Wiring and trim and all sorts of things. And up there, they're ready. Ready to meet the chassis. Yes, sir, they've got a big date coming up. <laughs> like a big date coming up, the little lady said. And it is. It's a big rendezvous toward which all the planning, working, and the timing have been designed. And whether you've witnessed this meeting four times or 4,000 times, it's always magic. It's magic by people who can work on the same car and make it exactly the way it was ordered, even though they do their work at different times and in different places. And this is the big moment, body meeting chassis. He controls the speed of the drop. And down they come. You've got to be ready, and you've got to be there. And you've got to keep cool. It won't be long now. Guide rods to line up the body in the frame. And she's down. I've seen it more times than I care to count. And each time there's something in it that's new. And that's almost all there is to it. The things that remain don't take long. Do you know something? The odds of two identical cars, identical in type, color, and trim, and every item of equipment, moving down one of these assembly lines together are about one in six million. The end of the assembly line. We give her her first gasoline, and she's ready to take off on her own power. There's still a lot of testing to do, and there are a few things to check right here and now. As many as 190 cars may come off these lines in a single hour, and the drivers never miss their target at the roll test. Now let's see. Radio. Check. Front seat. Check. Headlights. Check. Turn signal. Check. Engine. Lane selector. How about it? Well, 
that's the story. Blue, I think. With the ivory top. I don't care how long it is. As long as it's long. I want a little old green one. Red. Is there some other color? Black. Courtesy? Wishes.